of the four fundamental forces in the universe, the only one we can manipulate is electricity. We use it for everything. Our phone calls, our entertainment, our safety, and even our driving. Although electricity is the lifeblood of our modern way of life, it wasn't always that way. It took us a while to find out how to use its power for our own advantages. If you could credit just one person as the inventor of modern electrical engineering, it would be Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla was born in the Austrian Empire in 1856. He was the fourth child in a family of five. His father, Milutin Tesla, was an Orthodox priest, as was his maternal grandfather. Tesla moved to Karlovac to attend high school at the Higher Real Gymnasium. It was here that an unknown physics professor inspired his interest in electricity. Tesla was already showing signs of genius. He could perform integral calculus in his head. Some of his teachers thought he was cheating. He graduated high school in the class of 1873, and for a graduation present, he contracted cholera, which almost killed him and left him bedridden for nine months. His father, who originally wanted him to be a priest, promised to send him to engineering school if he recovered. Thankfully, he recovered and enrolled at the Imperial Royal Technical College in Graz where he earned the highest grades possible, as well as a letter of recommendation from the Dean of the Technical Faculty. Things would take a turn for the worse, however, in his third year when he failed out of school. Tesla would disappear after college and then resurface back home. In 1881, he moved to Budapest to work at the Budapest Telephone Company, rising to the position of Chief Electrician, making all sorts of improvements to the company's equipment along the way. In 1882, Tesla got a gig at Paris at the Continental Edison Company. While there, he would begin installing incandescent bulbs across the city. The management took note of Tesla's dash and soon had him troubleshooting engineering problems at other facilities. Others took note of Tesla's mad skills. Charles Batchelor, who had been overseeing the Paris operation, was brought back to America. Bachelor wanted Tesla to come back to the States with him, so Tesla immigrated to the blustering metropolis of New York City, where he worked at the Edison Machine Works. His job there was really the same as it was in Paris, troubleshooting machinery. It didn't last long, however. In just six months, he left the company for reasons unknown. Some say it was over a large bonus that he never received. Others say because the arc lamp system he designed was never put into production, and the boys at Edison were sore about it. It's hard to know for sure, and the only words we have from Tesla are from his autobiography, where he notates, Goodbye to Edison Machine Works. Whatever the reasoning, Tesla set out to make it on his own. At first, Tesla tried to make his arc lighting system work. Finding investors through a patent attorney, they began to make a system of using alternating current motors rather than DC to power his system. The manufacturing side of the business was fiercely competitive, and the investors optioned to bow out, leaving Tesla broke and alone. He lost his own patents since they were offered in exchange for investment. He was forced to take jobs as a repairman and digging ditches for just $2 a day. Tesla was forced to start over. Things would start looking up, however, when Tesla met Alfred S. Brown, a Western Union superintendent, and New York attorney Charles Fletcher Peck. The year was 1886, and they were totally into Tesla's AC motor idea. Enough that they were willing to become equal partners on the project, forming the Tesla Electric Company. They even had an office in Manhattan. Tesla would develop his AC motor, and along with his partners, would publicize it as best they could. In 1888, Tesla demonstrated his motor to the American Institute of Electric Engineers, where he caught the attention of some associates of George Westinghouse. Westinghouse negotiated a licensing deal with the trio for $60,000. Tesla also got a royalty of $2.50 per motor sold. Westinghouse made another offer Tesla couldn't refuse, a job. He paid Tesla $2,000 a month, $65,000 in today's dollars, to work as a consultant. It sure beat digging ditches, so Tesla agreed. He moved to Pittsburgh where Westinghouse was and got to work. However, it wasn't long until trouble would find Tesla once more. In America, 
There were three big players in the electricity game. Edison Electric, the Thomson Houston Electric Company, and Westinghouse, where Tesla worked. Things were getting really heated in the big debate between AC or DC. Edison and Thomson Houston relied on direct current, or DC. In a DC system, the current flows in one direction. There's a positive and a negative, and the polarity can't be reversed. The trouble with DC current is that it only works over short distances, and any power plants would need to be close by in order to work. This would make it virtually impossible to electrify all the homes in America's rural regions. Tesla and Westinghouse developed an alternating current, or AC. AC current changes directions and cycles. In America, that direction changes 60 times a second, or 60 hertz. In Europe and other regions, it's 50 hertz. A power plant using AC power can be many miles away from its destination. At the time, Edison and others thought that AC was unsafe and ran a campaign to show the world how dangerous AC power could be. Edison would publicly electrocute animals to show the perils of alternating current. His campaign did little to convince people of anything other than Edison was guilty of animal cruelty. The current wars took a toll on Westinghouse, and to help pay the bills, Tesla relinquished his patents back to Westinghouse in order for him to be able to compete. A few years later, Westinghouse paid Tesla a lump sum of $215,000, about $7 million in 2023. In a merger agreement with General Electric, Tesla's AC power had been victorious in the current wars. This left Tesla independently wealthy and free to pursue his own interests. Tesla began to experiment with Tesla coils and wanted to figure out a way to supply electricity without wires. He had all sorts of ambitions for wireless technology, including radio transmissions. In 1915, Tesla sued the Marconi company for infringement, who had been credited with inventing the radio. Tesla had patents on wireless tuning technology and felt that the radio was really his to claim. The trial went nowhere and Marconi had been credited with first radio broadcast although the invention of the technology is another matter. Tesla theorized that electricity could be used to locate submarines using high-frequency electric waves. Although he was wrong about using electricity for that purpose, eventually his idea would materialize into radar. Tesla even predicted the use of cell phones in 1926. We shall be able to communicate with one another instantly, irrespective of distance. Not only this, but through television and telephony, we shall see and hear on another as perfectly as though we were face to face, despite intervening distances of thousands of miles, and the instruments through which we shall be able to do all of this will fit in our vest pockets. In 1934, Tesla told reporters he had designed a super weapon. He claimed it would end all wars. He called it the Teleforce, but it was usually referred to as his death ray. Tesla never revealed detailed plans of how the weapon worked. The FBI investigated the possibility of this weapon, although they eventually dismissed the case. Towards the end of his life, Tesla lived in hotels, moving around from establishment to establishment, leaving behind unpaid bills. He was obsessed with pigeons, feeding them regularly, and sometimes spending thousands of dollars nursing them back to health. Word got around that he was living in impoverished conditions, and Westinghouse, in an attempt to avoid bad publicity, paid all of Tesla's bills in the form of a consultancy fee for the rest of his life. It is difficult to talk about electricity without mentioning Tesla. Just his name recalls images of lightning bolts and electricity flowing through the air like a cool breeze on a summer day. Tesla's AC current changed the way we power everything, and no one can deny the influence of his genius in the world of electricity and engineering. Today, we take for granted all the modern conveniences of the magic that electricity gives us. It's easy to forget that it wasn't always that way, and it took an uncommon intellect to bring the power of electricity into everyday life. Our phones, TVs, computers, and even our cars use the system that he envisioned. Tesla was ahead of his time, and his contributions will forever be remembered.